Hi, I'm Michelle of Lab Muffin Beauty Science, Chemistry PhD and Cosmetic Chemist. Today I'm going to be reviewing a bunch of Korean skincare products I've recently tried from brands I haven't really reviewed much before, and there's actually some really interesting biology involved. This video is sponsored by Style Korean, an online store that stocks a lot of Korean products, which I'm sure no one expected from the name. Like and subscribe and click the notification bell so you know when new videos go up. The first brand I'm talking about is Lagom. Lagom means not too little, not too much, just the right amount in Swedish, and that's pretty much what this skincare brand's approach is. Their products try to give skin what it needs in the right amount and removing what it doesn't need, but not removing too much. The main thing that made me really interested in Lagom is that the people behind the brand includes a team of 12 scientists and dermatologists, as well as one of Korea's top makeup artists, which is a combination you don't often see. I think it's really cool to get this broad range of input from a lot of different experts. I think you end up with a much more well-rounded product that way. I really love their branding and packaging as well. Their scale logo is really cute. Maybe I like it because it's pretty similar to my website branding. I've tried a couple of Lagon products before, I've reviewed them on my blog, and I really like the formulations, but they just didn't really fit into my routine. The Cell Up Gel to Water Cleanser is a really gentle morning cleanser, but I don't really need a morning cleanser. Their sunscreen has a really nice formulation, but the UVA protection was a bit too low for me. It's got PA with three pluses, and I just really need UVA protection. So I was pretty excited to try these formulations and I wasn't disappointed. The first one I'm going to talk about is the Cellus Deep Moisture Cream. This is one of the nicest moisturizers I've ever used. I'm not sure if I can say favorite yet, but it is definitely up there. It's really lightweight and hydrating. You don't need to use a lot. It absorbs really nicely. It has a silky texture. It works really well under makeup, which I guess is not surprising given that a makeup artist had input. I'm actually wearing it now. I mixed it in with my foundation. It also works really well to hydrate your skin overnight. And it's one of those moisturizers where your skin is still hydrated in the morning. And surprisingly, it was still hydrated after washing with cleanser. I have pretty dehydration prone skin, so finding something that gives me that dewiness without being too much or too heavy because I'm also oily is amazing. This cream gets my skin to that perfect amount of dewiness where it's not gross and shiny, but it's just really hydrated. Getting your skin well hydrated is a really good way of hiding pores and texture. If you plump up your skin, then pores and fine lines look a lot less obvious. That's what you really want if you're going for glowy skin. You want smoother texture and hydration is one of those things that seems temporary but makes a massive difference. If your skin is dehydration prone and you want something that really packs a punch without being too heavy or greasy, this is so good. It is fragranced, but it's not too strong and the smell goes away really quickly. It smells a bit like lemon lollies. It has been clinically tested to be really non-irritating, so it should be fine for sensitive skin unless you're really unlucky. In terms of ingredients, it's got lots of humectants and light emollients and an active called Aqualicia. Aqualicia is listed as hydrolyzed vegetable protein in the ingredients list. It's actually an acacia seed extract mixed with maltodextrin, and this works on aquaporins. You might have heard skincare companies talking about Nobel Prize winning science, and basically what this is, is the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2003 was given to two scientists that worked on discovering channels in cell membranes. The cell membrane is like the outside of a cell, the barrier, it's sort of like the skin of a cell. If we zoom in, it looks like this. So for a substance to get into a cell, it can either diffuse through the cell membrane, which is quite tricky. Some molecules can do it, some molecules can't, and you can't really do much to help that. The other option is if it fits into one of these special channels, it has a much easier time going in. It's sort of like a VIP entrance. There are tons of different channels and one type is for water and these are called aquaporins because they're sort of like a special pore for water. Now the top layer of your skin, the stratum corneum, or what we usually call the barrier, this acts a lot like a cell membrane. Much like a cell membrane, there are aquaporin channels in it. And it turns out a lot of ingredients that interact with these aquaporins are really effective at hydrating deep in your skin. For example, one of my favorite ingredients, glycerin, my precious, is one of the few molecules that some of these channels let through along with water. And it's probably one of the reasons why glycerin is just so darn good at hydrating skin. It also turns out that tons of ingredients that we already use in our skincare products seem to do stuff with aquaporins, and some of them aren't really well known for moisturizing. 
So for example, caffeine and retinoids are really good at acting on aquaporins and we all know that retinoids do not hydrate your skin. So I don't think it's really worth specifically seeking out aquaporin products if you want to help hydrate your skin. It doesn't really tell you more about whether the product will hydrate your skin than reading reviews or trying it out on your skin. This ingredient has been specifically tested for hydration and it works really well. It is also a humectant, so it could also be that. Long story short, whether it's the Aqualicia or the rest of the ingredients that's doing the work, this is an absolutely gorgeous moisturizer that hydrates my skin so much better than a lot of other products I've tried. So I think it's probably the combination of both. The next Largon product I tried was the Cellus Aqualane Solution. This is an anti-aging and hydrating essence. It's a newer launch from Largon. It's only been out for less than six months and it is very hydrating. I would say it is kind of violently hydrating. It has a really unusual texture that I quite like. It's very thin and it feels like an oil. It spreads really easily and after it's been absorbed, it's not oily. It's probably the product with the most dewiness packed into each drop I've ever tried. On my whole face, I needed like four drops and I think it's actually a really good value hydrating product because you need so little to spread on your face. This has a lemon fragrance. It is a bit stronger than the cream, but it doesn't become too noticeable if you mix it into another product and you don't really need a lot of it. As well as Aqualicia, it's also got Aquatide, which is a really interesting anti-aging peptide. It works on texture, it moisturizes skin, it's also antioxidant. It's gotten tons of awards and hype. I really like this. It is excellent at hydrating, but I guess I'm not quite as impressed by this as I am with the cream because there are quite a lot of hydrating serums out there. Although the texture of this is really lovely and quite unique, and I think I'll be using this a lot more going into winter. The next I tried is Atopalm, and I was really excited to try these because Atopalm and their parent company, Neofarm, they're really famous for doing a bunch of peer-reviewed studies on skincare. They're particularly well known for studies on moisturizers and the impact of moisturizing on your skin and on your body in general. If you read articles and textbooks about the science of moisturizers, you'll just keep coming across Atopalm and Neofarm. These products are MLE products, and what that stands for is multi-lamella emulsion technology. What it means is that these products use the right mix of three types of lipids, which are oily ingredients. Specifically, it's cholesterol, free fatty acids, and ceramides. And they actually use pasted versions that they make from plant ingredients. This mix is special because it means that the final product has a really similar structural arrangement to the lipids that are naturally in your skin barrier. So the idea is these products are really good at meshing with and adding to your skin's lipids. So it's adding a barrier to your skin while being as similar to your skin as possible. There's evidence that this is better at hydrating skin and it makes a really good base for delivering active ingredients. The research on MLE has been around for almost 20 years, so it's actually quite surreal to be holding and using the products that I keep on reading about. So yeah, I guess it's pretty obvious that I'm probably pretty biased here because I'm reviewing these products after seeing scientists hype them up ever since I started getting into the science of skincare. I guess to no one's surprise, Atopalm has a really good reputation as a dermocosmetic in Korea. These are those products that dermatologists recommend for sensitive skin. Fun fact, some of the researchers that did the MLE research, including the founder of Atopalm, were involved in developing Aquatide, which was the active ingredient in the Largon product. First up, we have the MLE cream. This was the first Korean skincare product to be officially recognized by the Ministry of Food and Drug Safety as a functional cosmetic helpful in restoring the skin barrier function. It has the MLE in it, which is the special mix of ceramides and lipids. It's also got a whole bunch of other moisturizing ingredients like shea butter, hyaluronic acid, amino acids, and allantoin. This is a really thick cream with a mild eucalyptus scent. It feels sort of like you're getting a really light whiff of a medicated ointment. It's targeted for dry and sensitive skin, so it's thicker and more emollient than a lot of the other products I've been trying, but it still doesn't feel greasy. I have oily skin and it's coming to the middle of summer here in Australia, so I haven't really been able to test this properly on my face. But I did have a flaky elbow for a week that I just kept on ignoring because that's just who I am. Eventually I remembered I had a whole bunch of skincare and I should do something about it. So I put this on it and it pretty much just stopped being flaky overnight, which I thought was incredibly impressive. The MLE lotion is pretty much the same sort of product, but it's in a much more lightweight texture. I've been really impressed by the cream so far. I'm going to have to test it out properly in winter and I'm gonna to have to try the MLE lotion on my face in winter, but so far everything looks really good. The final brand I tried is from Neogen Dermalogy. It feels like I'm missing a syllable there. Dermalogy, derm, 
Dermology. Dermology. Neogen is a brand I've seen around, but I haven't really tried them. And there isn't that much info about the brand online. So I don't really have a good idea of what the brand story is. They have some mysterious six core technologies thing, and they might have some clean beauty in there, which I think they've rebranded as Conscious. The two products I tried are snail products from their Sika Repair Snail range. Snail mucus is a classic Korean skincare ingredient and at least two OG Asian skincare bloggers named their blogs after this ingredient, Fifty Shades of Snail and Holy Snails. It's one of the few gimmicky, exotic Asian skincare ingredients that stuck around, unlike things like starfish extract and horse oil, which I'm pretty sure no one cares about anymore. I think that's decent evidence for snail extract working for a lot of people. It's good for a bunch of things, brightening, hydration, and smoothing. Obviously, snail mucus is not vegan, but the snails don't get killed in the process of harvesting. Newer processes claim that snails aren't harmed. On the website, in the product descriptions for these two products, Neogen actually says, using snail mucus extracted in a natural way, not in an abusive or harsh way in an environment where snails can live without stress from the outside environment. So they really make it sound like the snails are in a day spa. I'm sure it's not quite that nice, but I think it is a lot gentler than it used to be. So both products have a lot of snail mucus in them. They also have centella extract, which you can probably tell from the Sika Repair name. The cream also has 2% niacinamide. Both of these have really gooey textures, which is pretty typical for snail products. They're really hydrating and lightweight, and a little goes a long way with these. The gooey snail texture was actually a deal breaker for me with the snail cream. I found it really hard to get a small amount out of the jar. It's also a bit liquidy, so with my pathological lack of coordination, it feels like it's always about to spill out of the jar. I also just really didn't like the scent of this product. It has this berry-ish cherry smell, which I just have a particular aversion to. It's also stronger than I like, and so I couldn't really ignore it. This does seem to be reasonably good for sensitive skin though. I've seen reviews saying that they usually break out with snail products, but not with this. The snail essence is a lot more manageable since it comes with a pump, but it does have that same scent. I do really like the packaging though. It's pretty cute and fun, but I think I'm just not really the target audience for this. I think maybe I'm just too old. I think these products will work really well for someone who wants to try some snail products that target uneven skin tone that are also really good at hydrating skin. So I hope this was an interesting review. Let me know if you've tried any of these products before and what you thought. Like and subscribe if you like science-based beauty content. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok and check out my blog as well. And I'll see you next time for more beauty science.